time in uh, Okinawa, uh, JOT, but this is probably the first time I, I don't have the chance to go. Okay. Uh, two years ago, I went, it was a wonderful experience. So I tried to uh, follow all the information here. And thank you again for Anne's help and everybody who uh, chose to be here. Uh, it's a um, very preliminary study that I uh, have done about two years ago. Uh, from my academic presentation courses. So this is uh, more like the very initial efforts. And it's been almost 20 years after I came back uh, with my degree uh, from uh, teaching English uh, from the States. And this has been the new area I'm trying to explore. And so the topic is actually called a couple space study on lesbo knowledge. So I will be leading the audience to uh, two specific areas um, from um, the first language um, children's data. So you might wonder why I wanted to come to first uh, language child speech first. Okay. Oh, and by the way, I've been teaching in Kaohsiung uh, for the past 20 years. A uh, very simple connection between me and Japan is that uh, my wife is from Japan and she has been also teaching in our department of uh, Japanese uh, next to me. So it's been more like uh, 20 years of, of this um, comes and goes, and we try to uh, share ideas all, all around. And also it's been, been yeah, pretty sad. We, we, can, we cannot really go back to Japan for the past. It's more, more, almost like the beginning of the third year. So hopefully by sharing this um, topic, we will be able to um, brainstorm on something. And so feel free to ask me anything and the uh, references, I will be more than happy to share. A lot of them are free or online. Okay, so if you uh, wanted to ask me why I wanted to um, conduct this study, basically it's been more like my personal learning difficulty uh, for Kyo So uh, we are yeah, a bit crazy uh, and now going to, I would say a little bit insane uh, in Taiwan. Okay, it's been almost 20 years and now the government wants to do uh, the so-called bilingual education throughout K to 12. And currently, this is more like a review going back to the previous studies. So for the first number, if you look at it, you probably will see the number 8,000, and then the second number 10,000, and 16,000, 700 something. And they all represent some um, more like a threshold for vocabulary learning, okay? Uh, the first one, one 8,000 words are pretty much from the uh, what we are doing here uh, in Taiwan for the past 20 years is called GEPD. Uh, general English proficiency uh, test. It's coming uh, pretty much along with uh, TOEIC. Okay, it's the local test the students uh, before even even into college um, they have to take, especially for the entrance. It's being done commercially. Okay, uh, provided to everybody. And the second number, uh, I don't really have the reference here, but it's probably the uh, agreed number for. First link with children, okay, they were simply um, using about 10,000 words in daily routine life. So today's study, like I say, preliminary, I tried to look up into, uh, I tried to look up, the, look into some data from YouTube, from the real children's speech, and to see if they are actually using the so-called 10,000 words. And the 16,000 words are the references that I collected uh, to back up that pretty much for EFL college students before, like students that I'm teaching, by the time they come to college, this should be the worst they, 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 they are capable of. So probably uh, they, that's a gap between the first language children uh, vocabulary and the EFL college students vocabulary. But can we use that as the uh, starting point? That's basically my argument for today's presentation. So uh, I'm only looking at the uh, oral skills. So today, everything that I'm presenting is basically from um, the uh, spoken data. So between the children's speech and adults uh, speech, there will be some kind of let's go regu uh, regularity, which I will show in just a second. So uh, two uh, focuses that I will be uh, looking at. Uh, one is that what what, what do we mean by a very high frequency English words that kids are using? Okay, uh, The children that I'm referring to right now are the children who uh, speak English as their first language. And then also, uh, this is another belief that I'm trying to explore. Uh, basically, I was trained uh, under uh, CLT and also uh, I, I spent a lot of energy uh, working on Let's Go Approach. 
So basically, I also wanted to know if um, children are actually using a lot of bundles. Uh, by bundles, I'm referring to longer chunk of lexical units. And some radical uh, scholars actually argue that language probably just consists of uh, bundles. Okay, like now you are trying to comprehend what I'm saying. Basically, we don't really process word by word. Okay. So uh, very uh, simple two research questions. Okay, I'm collecting some online data which I call in child speech corpus, which will, if you wanted to use a uh, abbreviation, it will be CSC. And then I'm comparing them against two uh, online um, tools, which I will show in just a second. Uh, the first one is called Vocary Profile Kits. Okay, uh, it's a list collected by uh, a Canadian scholar, uh, Cope. Okay. Uh, they are all online uh, they, that, that will show a little bit okay and then the other list is pretty much collected based on the uh, adults of uh, first language basis okay from national uh, british national corpus and coca contemporary american uh, corpus which are two lists that are very uh, uh handy and quite 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 popular to be used as an online reference and the other thing is let's go bundles which is also on the same website which i will talk about in just a second so the methodology is very straightforward. Okay, uh, I went on YouTube where you can actually find uh, videos with captions, and these are all very popular uh, videos uh, being hosted by the uh, very young YouTubers. So collect them uh, all from the kindergartens, elementary school students. Okay, uh, for some reason, maybe some of their parents are just simply putting this uh, for fun, or I don't know. Maybe some of them are doing it for like a commercial. I think uh, some of them might want to have come across a few kids who are really yeah, making a lot of money by, by, by becoming young YouTubers. So uh, three channel, actually it's not channel, it's more like TV programs on YouTube. Okay? One is called Kids Try, Kids Meet, and Kids Describe. Uh, just a relatively not, not specific um, criterion in choosing them. So I put them all together. So there will be 12,396 uh, six words all together. And I'm not uh, differentiating them. So right now I'm just calling them. These will be the row counts of all the words. Okay, So I call them tokens. So these are the, uh, the tool that we can use. I'm trying to put it a little bit bigger. So uh, the website actually, like I say, it's being provided online for free uh, for many, many years. And the great thing about this website is being, it's being updated every now and then. So it's called Complete uh, Let's Go Tutor. So there are many quizzes that, that, that the teachers can actually use. And so I'm very happy to share this with everyone who is here today. So two tools I'm using, one is called Vocary Profile, all the short-term form again, Vocab Profile, okay? This is the list um, where you can have everything copy and paste and then the website will convert everything into data that, that are meaningful to everybody. And the lexical bundles are right now being um, tested here on the phrases tool, tool, which I will show in just a second too. So once you come in here, there are actually two um, big uh, divisions. The first one is called uh, VP Kids. Okay, they're actually um, what list. Okay, uh, I, I won't say it's a little bit biased. It's more like a regional uh, collection. Okay. The VP kids are actually uh, words that, that, that the children are using in the uh, in, in Canada, okay, basically. So there are about 2,500 words, okay. So if we have all the uh, data from the internet, uh, which I call uh, CSC, and then putting them all in here, and it will do all the work for you. I will show it uh, in just a second. And also these will be the list for all the classic that uh, you can use uh, for, for like a CFR or the British class, uh, British National Corpus classic list. The one I'm using here is actually a, more like a combination of British plus American uh, corpus. A simple reason for doing this is that uh, the British National Corpus was a little bit older and uh, more written forms uh, in here, okay? If you are following COCA, which is the contemporary American uh, corpus, it's more, um, geared toward the spoken data, or I would say uh, it has more spoken plus written data. So we try to balance this a little bit, okay? So results, okay. Uh, for the first question, okay, 
if you just uh, follow this a little bit, I will try to break it down a little bit uh, easier and try to make everybody a little bit uh, to, to understand a little bit easier. So uh, all together, the 12,000 words will be being uh, broken down to only 966 word families. Some words are deviations. They are not like uh, new words. So all together, they are 966. Okay, and the VPK is actually starting from the first, uh, I would say like 100 words, okay, all the way to uh, 2,500 words. So all together, so that's why we call KID 251, 2345. So all together, 72% of the words that kids are using, okay, are roughly uh, on the very, very first uh, beginning one, okay. But all together, they can still go up to level 10. So if you see the whole picture, 100 words, okay. So this is the place where you can actually have every, every word downloaded uh, for your teaching purpose. So we also wonder if you are using these word list to be uh, applied in a college classroom, how does that compare to the regular adult use of language? And I find it quite surprising too, uh, even if you try to put this 996 word uh, against the adult's English use, okay? You can actually see most people probably uh, by the time you get to 95%, okay? Actually, children are actually using uh, 4,000 word level words. Okay, the K stands for uh, 1,000 E. Okay, if you wanted to go up a little bit higher, okay, by the time you come to 98%, uh, when I say 98% is pretty much uh, the 98% of the 996 word family. Okay, the children of uh, first language are actually using 9,000 word level uh, difficult. Words. Okay, so basically, it's quite amazing to see that even for the native speakers uh, at a very young age, they are able to. Um, not, I won't say play with. It's more like they 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 were very. It's quite 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 scary. They will be able to use all the words up to nine thousand words. Okay, so by the time we try to look into the bundles, okay, this is the place where we will have a lot of controversy. I personally. Uh, do not have uh, very good answers uh, for leads because um, I know I observe them, I collect them, and I don't really know if we uh, wanted to teach them at all. But uh, this will be the bundles that we uh, found quite significant because they are being uh, observed and being used okay, by all the uh, children of first language. Okay? So roughly, of course, we will be able to see two words more often. It comes up to about 1,000 uh, frequency. Okay, so examples will be like Ulysses, I think, I know, okay. Uh, for those of you who are probably interested in discourse markers, you could probably look into uh, discourse markers like the I know, okay. Uh, I had a student who has done a master's thesis on, on discourse markers uh, like well, okay, you know, okay. Stuff like that, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are cases you can, you can go in like forever, okay. And three word will be more like, I don't think, have you ever, it looks like, okay. And four words, okay, same, same, same examples. Of course, uh, by the time you go up to six words, it will be, yeah, less common, okay. And just another uh, example, last night I was driving and I was listening to some pop songs. You, you actually see uh, pop singers using all this again, and then you can probably predict what words will come, come, come uh, after certain words. So what will be the uh, implications and some kind of discussions that I'm trying to present, and maybe I will be able to draw some conclusion, okay? And then try to allow some time, maybe I will try to end everything a little bit earlier, okay? And then invite more audience to kind of talk about it. So basically there will be two small aspects for first research question, okay? If you wanted to see how many words that, that, that children of first language are using, okay? They're actually having um, all these many, okay, 966. And then um, if you if we wanted to compare the, these words uh, into uh, adults vocabulary, it can go up to 4,000 difficulty level or 9,000 difficulty level, which is quite amazing too, okay? If you still remember the, uh, the number that I tried to present for regular EFL college students, the uh, vocabulary number roughly will be more like 16,000. And these are the bundles from the most to the least. And some implications before I draw some conclusions and some implications for everybody. Uh, it's um, kind of interesting because uh, it was uh, 
more like a pilot study that I that I led my student to do within a semester. So probably we only have about nine weeks time, and the data collection period was not that long. Okay, so roughly very small data. Okay, and the other thing is that uh, I'm also I was okay, it's just 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 not just then. It's more like now. Okay, I I've been sus sus uh, feeling suspicious that. Probably some of the videos uh, have been uh, edited. Okay, so they are not like the original, the authentic one. But uh, without access to the uh, first language speaking children, probably this is the uh, compromise way I can do. Just try to find some edited uh, videos. Okay, and lastly, and the categories are not that many. And if you wanted to go for the diverse uh, or nature topics uh, on a daily basis, maybe there will be some other uh, area we can explore. Okay? So implications, okay. Uh, like I say, uh, what would be the very easier way to start? Um, if you are looking for authentic list of uh, vocabulary, okay, that we can learn as a second language speaker, as an EFL learners, okay. Especially you know, right now we are being cut and then not having the access to, to, to travel, to interact, okay. Even though we, we are still doing a lot of online programs and trying to integrate with um, uh, speakers or all, all around the world, okay? but this could be something that we can we can actually start, right? And previously, I have done some other summer camps with Japan and also Thailand. And we also wanted to see some common grounds. Okay, maybe there will be words that we can explore uh, with uh, students of different backgrounds. Okay. And right now, like this semester, we are seeing a lot of international students coming, especially from Vietnam. Uh, the Philippines, and I have a student from Poland, okay, and we also wonder, okay, if we put uh, students of all different first language backgrounds, would this be still a very solid foundation, especially for the world list that we can start if we just wanted to narrow them. If we start from that 996 world families, okay, teaching won't be that difficult, especially from the very initial stages, okay. And then on this is more like a question than an answer because I wouldn't be so confident that, that uh, if we should emphasize on the teaching or the learning of let's go on this. But to a certain degree, uh, some some phrases or idioms would be a very um, good topic to start. Okay, and typically some people will say uh, like I don't know, as you wish. Okay. But uh, there will be some other meaningful ones. Okay. Uh, the one uh, as an EFL learner uh, myself, the one that actually hit me very uh, severely okay, or leaving me a very strong impact is that um, one, 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 one of the days when I was in the States and Remy was asking me to make a choice. And then I was telling him what you want to eat, okay, either. And then he replies, either or. Okay. That's really strong to me because uh, it is not something that, that any textbooks will, will probably have um, incorporated. Okay? So to me, it's a, it's a huge shock. You can actually have a very short on those and then giving people so much uh, meaning. Okay? So anyway, this is part of the closing uh, remark I will leave with the audience today. Okay? And yeah, it, it was fun, okay? even though I, uh, I, I shouldn't be complaining, there are people coming from, from uh, the European time zones. Okay? It's probably one hour. Um, earlier here in Taiwan and just wanted to wake up and try to catch up with everybody. And hopefully this will be something that I can share with everyone. Okay, if you wanted to try and this could be a, a very good material for the way you can collect some data. Okay. So first thing child speech could be a good material to start. So uh, this is my email. Okay, for all for all the other further uh, questions and inquiry, if you do have some, please let me know. Okay. It's been uh, almost 20 years okay, that, I, that I've been teaching here. So uh, I even made a mistake here. Okay, it's probably my late line work. I try to quit this nation of Gaussian. I'm sorry. So roughly, this is where I will probably just stop. Okay? And the very initial work I've been trying to advise several students to do um, studies of this track. And learning vocabulary has been always one of my major um, interest probably okay. and I will just probably end here and welcome everybody if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you so much for your presentation. If people have questions feel free to raise your hand or put them in the chat box. Oh Namiko Sinfei. Thank you so much for your presentation. I'm just very curious about 
the school uh, situation in Taiwan, because I know that English education has been implemented several years earlier than in Japan, plus the fact that in Japan, we only have um, two years in elementary school that's compulsory. So I'd like to know uh, what's the situation like in Taiwan and if there's you know any hope for us to kind of pick up some ideas in terms of what you're doing over there. Thank you. Uh, Namiko Sensei, this has been, been my, my major concern and it's pretty sad to share. Uh, the first time uh, I was a PhD student back in the States and I always remember it was two decades ago when our vice president was so uh, passionate implementing the uh, so-called EMI, okay? wanting to do English only instruction in the classroom. And then uh, everybody, uh, my classmate back in my in, in, in the classroom was so impressed. Okay, so uh, I'm also wanted to share. I also want to share with you. Okay, that's the uh, historical background. Okay, and this year we are doing it again. Okay, so the government took out a lot of money trying to implement everything from elementary all the way to college. Okay, and as a, as a college teacher, uh, I am right under the impact. Okay, and funny thing, I'll use my two kids as example, okay. My son had a compulsory study of education, uh, of English education earlier, and the daughter who is two years younger, okay, and she started later, and she had a hard time doing all the spelling. We just had a very funny uh, final exam, okay. Uh, she had all the great vocabulary, great listening, comprehension, ability, speaking ability, but she couldn't do any spelling, okay? And then my son probably have uh, more memory uh, uh, devices, okay? But throughout the whole whole, whole island, I, I have to say, I'm not seeing too much change, okay? I would say probably under, it's been the time that I was uh, being trained uh, under the uh, so-called CLT uh, inference. Students and children of these past two decades are more into the listening and speaking skills. And then they are losing pretty much the written and spoke, uh, read, written and, and reading kind of a, a, a fluency. Okay, this is as much as I can share. And then the government right now want us to do something really magical. Okay, I'm using some kind of the, yeah sarcastic form. Okay, especially I will use the word magically. In three to five years, um, every college is hoping to have. I would say, uh, I don't know how much is the percentage, but, but, but eventually we have been expected to do English only instruction in the university. Okay, so three years down the road, five years down the road, uh, I, I think we, as, a, as a language teacher, you probably don't, don't want to see the word uh, KPI, but, but this is the way the uh, managers are trying to run the university. They just give you the money, send the number, and by 2030, you have to reach certain goals. Okay, as a teacher, I would say this is probably more like a mission impossible. Okay, and I I don't know because um, if you take uh, economy and, and everything, uh, all the criteria into consideration, I wouldn't say uh, Taiwan is doing any 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 better job than, than many countries. It's been always very struggling, and simply, uh, I think this is more like a, a decision. Okay. Uh, Chinese Mandarin is more like the, uh, the main language here. Once you leave the classroom, you wouldn't be able to use English. And it will be considered not so realistic if you are trying to use English only. And also our time in learning uh, maybe cognition is limited. This is basically my, person, uh, my, my personal opinion. Once you start spending more time on a foreign language, it's definitely going to affect your, your main mother tongue. So uh, I'm seeing it uh, happening in Hong Kong because after the return, uh, people in Hong Kong started using English uh, and Chinese, okay, as 50, 50%. And the English fluency is right now dropping in Hong Kong. And I'm seeing the more of the downside. If we try to spend more energy, more classroom time, we were probably losing a lot of uh, Chinese literacy, okay also, which is our uh, mother tongue in Taiwan. So currently, I don't know, okay, because I'm, we've, been, we've been trying to implement a lot of new uh, 
ways of teaching and also um, we get a lot of funding and, and personally I'm a little bit hesitating okay even though I, I of course this is my my major and I'm, I'm teaching nothing but using English but I will see uh, a lot of teachers uh, especially throughout all the different majors they are struggling like 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 a crazy okay imagine if you have to teach English by um, uh, teach like 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 geography algebra or, or, or calculus by using English okay this is going going crazy I have to say and the government is hoping that we will start implementing from K to 12 and all the way up to college. And I uh, just wanted to give everybody a number. Um, my university is, is relatively big. Right now, we are the second biggest in Taiwan uh, after we, we be merged. Okay? We, we were previously three different colleges. And right now, we are one single, very big one. And every semester, we are offering about 4,000 to 5,000 courses which is a lot, okay? And then you probably will only see 100 courses simply being taught in English. So 100 versus about four or 5,000, 2%, okay? So you will see the distance between the 2% to the other 98%. And how many years are we going to need it? <laughs> and it's shaking your head, I, I, I can see, okay? Whenever I, I, I'm at that kind of meeting, Okay, I, I couldn't I, I couldn't listen to anything that people are saying because I think they are they are simply going crazy. Okay, but it, it's it's a very good goal and to, to be a little bit more selfish. It, it's probably going to give uh, teachers like us to have more job opportunities. So, thank you. Um, in Taiwan, the K to twelve program, or maybe let's say K to six, so primary school. Mm -hmm. um, is there a textbook that yes. Taiwanese students have to use? So it's probably the same as in Japan. Do you know roughly what the vocabulary or how, how many vocabulary words they would receptively know by the end of sixth grade? I wouldn't say that many. It's funny that everything before junior high is very fun oriented. And from my daughter, okay, I, I hate to say that, but she, she almost failed her last final. I uh, saw so all the vocabulary would be pretty much more like the first 100 words. Maybe juice, milk. It's all very simple. And by the time they started uh, junior high, everything goes back to the uh, test-oriented exams. Mm -hmm. So it's more like the people will throw away all the uh, very fun interactive activities. And all of a sudden, we go back to the traditional, um, yeah, the so-called uh, exam-oriented, because eventually they will be more like the uh, uh, Joint exams that the students have to prepare. Okay. We, we've, been, we've been trying to use uh, multiple ways, multiple channels of entering high schools and also universities, but I still see the pressure. Have you done studies about uh, word lists in the textbook, like in the MEX, mm -hmm. or sorry, for us it's MEX, the Ministry of Education, but yes. um, I've actually looked at the textbooks um, in junior high school and elementary school and compared them with the high frequency list that exists. Yes. Um, and the discrepancy is really upsetting. Um, yes. So this is, this is a, these are textbooks mandated by the Ministry of Education. I know. And yet it doesn't cover in, enough, even though they say students will, you know, learn 600 words, th those 600 words are not important. Yes. Um, only 20% or less than 20% really cover what they need to know. So I wonder, yeah, if something can be done about this. And I wonder, is it the same in Taiwan as well? Yes, uh, uh, Amiga, I didn't really catch your, your last name, so I'll just call uh, you now. Surita, sorry. Okay, uh, it's, it's, it's also very really funny. I started uh, having interest in this kind of study uh, after I attended a talk by Dr. Tono. Uh, he's probably very famous in Japan. So he had a budget from uh, the prime minister and he actually did a study comparing all the uh, textbooks mm -hmm. uh, being used from, I, I wouldn't say from K, it's probably from elementary school all the way to high school uh, among all the major countries in Asia, okay? Uh, including China, Japan, South Korea. I don't really remember if Jap uh, Taiwan is part of it, but uh, the report was kind of yeah, shocking. Uh, Japan's world list is probably the most limited. Yes. yes. Okay, which I'm, I'm, I don't find it quite surprising. And 
I wanted to also go into that and probably following his study. So a student of mine actually did that. Um, I think that that's also the same system in Japan. Uh, my student didn't really go into all the major uh, works that have been done. So we only did one on the uh, textbooks using by all the uh, vocational high school. Mm -hmm. And there are three different series. It's, it's kind of said, uh, this student never get to the end of his work. We have all the data and, and analyzed, yeah. okay? It's funny that uh, three commercial uh, publishers, uh, one of the most shocking ones is that uh, it, it's it, one publisher uh, has never included any collocations or any idioms in one series of textbooks. Imagine there are six different textbooks. They are using one for each semester. So three years of six textbooks altogether. And I would say the, the, the total work, um, uh, number in that series is actually not meaningful. Okay, so I would say if we, we have uh, a chance to look into all these regional, okay, like I say, we, we have a lot of students from, from Vietnam, and I'm also seeing a lot of uh, amazing potentials uh, from the Vietnamese students, okay, mm -hmm. and how they, they have never been abroad, they have never uh, 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 taken any, any very uh, formal or interactive way of teaching, how do they actually um, come up with all these um, great fluency? So by, by comparing the world, world families or, or the world lists okay, throughout different uh, nations uh, textbooks, especially this could be the references that our students can only have access to. And how, I'm so how sorry, can I have to interrupt you guys because no, it's no problem. the clock, but yeah, there are some you. sidebar rooms available. If you'd like to continue your conversation, you can go into like sidebar room two, say and continue it there but there's another presentation in this room thank you so thank much you. for your presentation thank you so much thank, thank you. you thank you bye-bye thank you so much